Starting an extended essay is a big challenge and most students find it very hard to come up with an appropriate research question. However, a good research question means 25% of your battle is already won. Your supervisors can help you with this, but they often gently leave you to it. And you'll want to be very careful here. With the right question, almost anything is possible. But with the wrong question, you're setting yourself up to fail. Now, most students brainstorm possible ideas, ask for suggestions, read successful EE samples, which are often available in your high school library. But I want to help you do better than that average student. Now there is this four point test which will help you make sure that your RQ is top notch. Now a good research question needs to pass all these four tests. So let's get started. Now the first test is to find out if it is the right score. Of course the question needs to be one that is answerable within the 4000 word limit. But you should be asking one relatively simple question. That is the 4000 words seem like a lot right now. But after say a few months of research and writing, it really won't. So it's important to try to make your question as focused or as small as possible. A question like, has India's government approach to healthcare improved economic growth is way too broad. That's my crazy talk. But why? Because the government has a lot of approaches to healthcare, probably like thousands of them. And would be, it would be pretty hard to show any casual link between any of these strategies and economic growth. Now a question like, is India's telecom industry an oligopoly? Probably is way better, right? It's not too broad. But however, that's one question that can probably be just too obvious. India has only three dominant market players, namely Reliance, Jio, Bharti, Airtel and Vodafone Idea. So you can pretty much answer your question on the first page and you'll be through it. So you need something that fits between these two extremes. Now in India, at least to me, it is much less clear that whether the movie theatre industry is an oligopoly or could you ask what market structure would best characterize the Indian movie theatre industry. Simple, right? Let's get to the second test. The second test is to identify which cost concepts or tools you'll use. Now, are you able to identify several cost concepts that you can use to analyze your question? In business, you'll need four or five of these. In economics, you'll need one main uh, tool and one or two smaller ones which can touch upon those. Now, obviously, if you can't tackle the question using ideas from the course, then it's really not appropriate. Your mission here is to really show off how much you understand the ideas taught in class. Now, one common mistake which slightly happens more in business than in economics but uh, is to research every single possible aspect of a business maybe because your dad works there and then you expect that sharing information will impress the maker so much that you'll get a seven and every single year there is at least one student who does that normally without realizing it they think that knowing as much about the company as an insider has it enough but it really doesn't we just want to see that you understand the course concepts and then you can use them to prove or disprove your thesis using these core concepts. Now let's move on to the third test. The third test is to check if you will have the information. Will you actually have access to the secondary information you will need to answer your question? And will you actually be able to do the primary research required? Now this one is tricky. You won't always be able to answer that question right away. However, you do need to answer it really soon. If your RQ fails test 3, you won't be able to use it at all. Try to think about concepts you'll be using in your test 2. Now for economics, especially the above example, the theatre one, you might want to determine whether there is a price competition or you'd want to compare prices over different timelines from different theatres, from different theatres, in different locations and different times etc now that information won't be easy to get but test 3 is all about access now ee research normally requires that someone on the inside trusts you now for a business student if you're doing a swot analysis and some kind of investment appraisal what data will you need to fill in those tools consider what information you would need to answer those questions now data that you expect is probably available say probably online generally isn't so you'll have to do your homework here and the earlier the better 
Now, if you're going to rely on someone that is your uncle or your dad or somebody to turn a copy of their company's balance sheet, get what you need from them now and get it as soon as possible. And if they don't give you the numbers or the interview that you need within a month, it's probably time to change your RQ. Now, don't take this stuff personally, but people are generally busy or sometimes information is confidential which they don't want to share. So get as much data as you can in the first month and show this to your supervisor. Now, every year there are students who face problems related to lack of information until there are only a few months left and then it's really too late. Now, let's get to the last test. The last test is to check if this topic will really help you personally. Ideally, the research you do here will help you get into your preferred university program. Now, if you're applying for an econ program at university next year, then it would really be great to have a letter from your econ teacher explaining what a splendid job you've done in your recent E. Or perhaps you aren't sure if you really want to pursue business in university at all or not, then this EE might prove to be a great opportunity to experience what university study might be like. Or maybe you're simply genuinely interested in the research question. But the point that I'm making here is that it's great if you have some other kind of motivation other than just finishing your EE that will really help you do better work and get ahead of the pack. You should ask yourself whether you feel your question has passed each of these tests. Take your time and be sure. It's okay to ask other people if you think that your question passes these tests as well. You can also get in touch with me for mentoring. I meant I can mentor you through your entire EE journey. DM me to know more. Good luck everyone. Kill it with your EE. Signing off.